Hi everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I'm going to do a bracelet for you using a new product. This is the crisscross bead. The crisscross bead when you look at it has two holes and one hole is going through the bead in one direction and then flip over and one is going the opposite way. So when you look at it there kind of on the angle you can see the two beads going through crisscross directions, one going one way, one going the other. Because of that, I'm going to be calling this bracelet the Hopscotch Bracelet. It's using the crisscross beads, which are from the Czech Republic and a four millimeter, as well as round duo beads. So the round duo beads that I'm using are the Jet Hematite color and then the Opaque Lilac Shimmer color. I'm going to change up and use two colors because I think it'll look nice and really highlight the effect that's going on here with the crisscross. I also have a cup button here and this is a crystal magic blue cup button for my closure. I have some 80 and 11 OC beads. These 8 OC beads are the black hematite, so they're a check coating on a Mayuki 8 OC bead. And that's the same color I actually used in my little sample piece. I'm going to be highlighting that hematite color with a round duo and dropping that in the middle of some of my design work here and switching up the colors. The 110 is going to be the cranberry luster, so it has a little bit of that kind of reddish pink hues that really plays up on the cup button and kind of shimmers really nicely off the gray and the purple and the hematite color. I'm going to be using two needles to do this, so I have two size 10 needles and they are a pony, a pony brand English beading needles. Because of my colors here and the fact that you do see the thread a little bit, um, you're going to see the thread just a tiny bit coming out of the crisscross beads. So I kind of have gone back and forth on the thread color and I am going to be using a black thread. The thread that I'm using is the Wildfire Beading Thread in .006 and I'm going to be using black. I have green here but I need to grab my black. I'm going to be using about six feet of beading thread. I also have sitting here my slip and snip scissors to cut my thread. I have a couple off beads just to create a stop bead and some super new glue. I also have a needle nose pliers to help, or a wide jaw pliers to help me flatten out my thread in order to thread my needles easier. And then I have my thread burner and this is the thread zap 2 sitting handy that way I can burn down the ends of my project. We're going to be doing this in kind of a succession. It was funny sitting down the other night and playing with these crisscross beads for the first time because they kind of almost create a geometry pattern and a geometry question in your mind because of them going two different ways and two different holes. So I right away went to the round duo bead for that. So we're going to make little piles. We're going to be using the um, 11 OC beads first and the round duos that are running down the center, which will be both of my colors, and our crisscross beads. So I have my beads laying out here in a pile, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play up the center of this bracelet. So I'm going to do that by using the hematite color right down the middle. Because I am able to and I'm working with two needles, I'm going to put my cup button on my thread right away. I have two needles that are on a six foot piece of thread, one on each side, and I'm going to pick up with my right needle three 11 OC beads. Then with my right needle going through the dome side first of the cup button, I'm going to go one needle through the right hole and one needle through the left hole. And then I'm going to push that down right to the base of my cup button. So you can see it's going to hold it right in place there. What I'm going to do now is just create a little bit of space before starting my hopscotch bracelet so that way my clasp can go on easier and there's going to be a lot of wear and tear though there. So what I'm going to do is put three 11 OC beads on each of my beading needles and let that drop down to my project. Again, we're looking at this bracelet, just the middle row to start. And to start my middle row, I'm going to keep my needles separated, one to the right and one to the left. I'm going to pick up my crisscross bead. And I'm going to go one hole through from right to left and the other one from top to bottom. So you can see there the cross section of where the beads 
are the bead holes are and I'm gonna pull my needles through and let those drop down next to my project once I have that on you'll see the effect that it kind of sits a little cockeyed into the side because of the way that the holes are facing when we get to the center row here it's always going to be sitting on that diamond shape when we get to the sides they're going to be sitting point up and we'll worry about that when we get to it from now on I'm going to do the center row which is very very easy we're just going to do three beads at a time and then we're going to stick on a round duo bead and then a round crisscross and then a round duo so we're going to be going through it actually creating our pattern i have three 11 o's on my right needle and then one of my hematite round duos and then three 11 o's i'm going to let that drop down next to my crisscross bead and then pick up my other needle when i pick up the other needle i'm going to put on three of my 11 o's Go back to that same round duo to the opposite hole and take that up. Once I'm coming out of there, I want to put on three more seed beads. So my pattern is quite simple. It's three seed beads on either side and then crisscross round duo, crisscross round duo. So I'm going to go in now and put another crisscross bead in on and then Remember, it doesn't really matter which direction you're going with this first bead. I'm going to stick this on, drop it down next to my project, and then continue on with my pattern. And again, I'm going to go in here and put on another round duo, another crisscross, another round duo, the whole length of my project to get that baseline established. Once we get to the end of that line, it's not going to shrink up much at all, so you want it pretty much to fit. Um, I want it to touch it most so that way when the loop gets added, which adds a little bit of length, it's going to fit exactly. It will um, come up and shrink up just a tiny little bit, but that'll be more on the sides than actually down the middle row because the sides are what go up and down according to which row of the crisscross that you are on. So what I'm gonna do now is coming out of my last crisscross bead, I'm going to make my loop for my cup button. And when I do that, uh, the loop for the magic cup button, I'm going to pick up one of my needles. It doesn't matter whether or not it's the right or the left needle, and I'm gonna put on 26 of my 11 O seed beads. I'm gonna add them to the one needle, and then we're gonna reinforce with the other needle. If you do prefer to have more than two strands of thread going through your clasp, um, we will be coming back up and down the project, so you'll have an opportunity to do that further on in your bracelet. And this hopscotch bracelet does go up and down three times on your bracelet. Once you have your beads uh, enough to make your loop, you're going to put that needle down that you're working with and pick up the needle from the opposite side. We're gonna run that needle through the beads in the opposite direction, which is going to reinforce that loop that we've created. Once I have that loop created and the threads coming through each line, you wanna make sure to pull down your thread so that way you don't have any extra thread showing. So you're gonna pull down the thread on the one side and then pull down the thread on the other side as well and just kind of work back and forth making sure to tighten that up. What we're going to do now is the first of our side of our um, second set of our round duo beads. So we're going to have round duo beads on the sides now running down the right and the left side of this center of our hopscotch bracelet. For this I am switching to my other color of my round duo beads. And what I'm going to do is pick up my purple round duo beads. When I pick up my purple round duo beads, I'm also going to pour out a couple of my 8-0 seed beads so we can add those coming down the side. So as we come down the side, what we're actually going to be doing is linking our 8-0 seed bead into the center 11-0 seed bead that's in the line here. So we're going to be doing um, almost a 
uh, square stitch version of coming through our beads and then coming back up. So I'm going to grab my one needle and just kind of push it off to the side because we're only doing this one side at a time. I'm going to do a couple on the one side and then I'll come back and do a couple more um, on the other side. I'm not going to go the whole length with one side. So what we're going to be doing again is adding that next row of our round duo beads and to do that I'm going to start by adding my 11 OC beads to get to my round duo bead. We're going to be adding more of the crisscross beads right next to the crisscross and more of the round duos right next to the other round duos so they're in a line when you're working on them. So I'll kind of set that right over there for you guys. When I'm coming up what I want to do actually is add some seed beads in order to connect that first row and kind of frame out this first bead. I'm going to be adding three of my 11 OC beads and then one of my 8 OC beads. So we're going to do three 11 O's and one 8 O. And let that drop down. What I'm going to do now is that square stitch version where I'm going through in the opposite direction, the middle 11 O from the previous row, pulling my thread through so it's going to be linked up like that and then coming back out that same 8 0 So I'm circling around. If you want to, you could even just go down the line and do the 11 or the 8 0s first. That's up to you. Once I'm coming out of the uh, 8 0 seed bean, I'm going to add an, another 11 0, a round duo, and an 11 0, and an 8 0. So I have my 11 round duo, 11 8. Now what I'm going to do is go back to that third bead there in the previous row. And I'm going to link onto that. So same deal here. I'm going to go around in a circle going through that 11 0 towards my loop that I made. And then coming back through the 8 OC bead and that's going to link them together. When I do the next one I'm going to add an 11 0, a crisscross bead, an 11 0, and an 8. So this is always the pattern you're just alternating what you're picking up. You're coming back to the previous 11 0 there, always the middle of the three, back towards my loop And then, oops, back through my 11 -0, or my 8 -0, I'm sorry, towards the button. So you're just circling around. And then I'm going to go on, continuing with that pattern of my 111, whichever shape I need to add, another 11 and an 8. Circle back through that middle bead of my three. Coming back out my eight. Do a nice tight pull. And there we have it. So you're continuing on here, adding these beads going from uh, the cube, the crisscross to the round duo and so on down the line. So I've started down each side here and you're going to notice that the beads on the sides are really going to kind of flip around. Don't worry about that right now as we're working with them. Eventually we will make sure that they're all sitting in the same direction. Um, but for right now it doesn't matter as you're coming down the bracelet. And again I'm just coming down the right side a little bit, then the left side and switching back and forth, playing up that crisscross and that kind of hopscotch of the different lines. So you're going to continue down the same pattern the whole way down the right and the left side. So I've come down both sides adding my beads here and what I'm going to do now is like I did on the end with the loop I'm going to kind of frame out that last crisscross bead. I'm going to do that by adding three more 11 O's. So I've gone and added my last round duo bead and circled back through my eight I'm going to add three 11 O's 
And then I'm going to sew up through the 11 O's that are right next to my cup button, through my cup button. And at the same time, if you can, it's a good idea to catch that first seed bead inside the cup button. Take that same needle there, go down the cup button on the other side, and come out those three beads right before the crisscross. Put that needle down, do the same thing on the other side, adding three beads and then reinforcing. What this is doing is reinforcing the clasp as well as um, getting those last little beads around the crisscross and getting your needles in place to do your final pass up your project. Once I have my needles coming out of the three beads on each side, I'm gonna to continue to frame out that last little bit by adding three more beads. What I'm gonna do is take my needles on both sides and I'm gonna go out my seed beads, the three that I added on either side. And then I'm gonna come out at that point. Once I'm out those three beads on either side, I'm gonna add some more seed beads in order to get to the second hole of my round duo bead. So I'm gonna be adding four of my 11 -0 seed beads on either needle, and then going through the outer hole of the round duo bead on each side. And that's going to frame out that little 8 OC bead as well as kind of draw everything in together there at the end. So again on this side here, four more go on. I'm going through the second hole of my round duo bead. Now what we're going to do is get ready to come down the bracelet to create that raised and bubble effect. Another idea for you, if you wanted, you could actually alter, have alternated so the round duos are on the sides of the crisscross bead and the crisscross are on the side of the middle round duo. So you could have alternated as well if you didn't want to form this line. It'll still create a wave pattern. What I'm going to make sure when I'm going through my beads is that I'm always going through my bead with my crisscross bead, that hole facing out towards the right. On the opposite side, it's gonna face out towards the left. To create that little wave effect of the second hole of the crisscross here, you can see we're gonna be adding three seed beads. It's gonna go from an up pattern to a down and vice versa on each side. That's gonna create that wave pattern and force kind of the round duo to sit on its side. It's also gonna show off the crisscross beads and show the different shape that they have. So I'm gonna add three 11 O's on my right hand needle and I'm going to work just with my right for a little bit and then pick up and work with my left. So I have three. I'm going to sew through the crisscross bead from that top to bottom. Add three more beads and sew through my round duo bead. And that's going to create kind of that zigzag effect on the side. Adding three more 11 O's making sure I'm sewing through the crisscross in the correct shape or the correct way with the hole being out towards the right, coming through towards the bottom, and then adding three more beads and sewing through my round duo. At the end of each one of these, I do wanna give a nice tight tug. That's gonna to help to create that wave effect that we're looking for. So I'm gonna continue on adding my 11 O's between those crisscross and between the round duos up on the right side and then up on the left side as well. Once you've come down both sides, you wanna give a nice tight pull because that's gonna keep it from kind of twisting on itself. The nice thing is because we're going in the same direction on both sides, you have that nice contrast showing the different sides and the different peaks of the actual um, 
cube bead. So it's kind of fun to have that crisscross effect in the hopscotch bracelet. When I'm back to the end now, and you can see kind of the sides there have a little twist going to them, and it's almost a tad bit three-dimensional when you're working with it. Once I'm to the end here, what I'm gonna be doing is framing out the last little bit like I did next to my cup button. And then you can choose if you wanna reinforce the loop, you can do that. I am going to do that just a tad bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my four 11 OC beads. And I'm gonna let them drop down next to my clasp here, or next to my beads here. And what I'm gonna do then is pick up the seed beads right after my eight O seed bead that I added. I'm gonna go up all the beads, and at the same time, if you can, go up through the clasp. I'm just gonna frame out that side. And again, it's reinforcing that loop one more time. This is the third pass through the loop. I'm then gonna bring my needle out right next to my crisscross bead and let that one hang out there, making sure my tail's not in there. Then on the other side, I'm gonna pick up four 11 O's. I'm gonna sew through the C beads right after, those first three C beads right after my 8 O, and that's gonna put my needles and my thread out right next to one another. Take your needles off your thread, and what we're gonna do is simply tie. This is your last opportunity to kind of tighten up your project, and we're just gonna tie overhand knots. I'm gonna tie one and then the other. The last thing I'm gonna do is glue these knots that I've done. With some of my super new glue, just a little dab. Let that dry for a second. Sometimes I'll do a little blow on the actual glue, making sure that it goes kind of inside the bead and it just doesn't bubble there. After I do that, I'm gonna grab my, my cutters, cut down my threads real short. And then inevitably, you're gonna have just a little bit of thread sticking up. That's where the thread burner comes in handy. And you're just gonna hold in the side, whether or not you're using the ultra or the threads up too, both function the same way. I'm just gonna burn down those thread ends just a tiny little bit. That glue's still drying just a little bit, but you can see that fun effect that you get from the actual crisscross beads for this hopscotch bracelet that it's showing off the different angles of the beads. Again, you could do the same effect with alternating and kind of have it be every other bead rather than the row of them. I think that would look really cool as well. And the instructions for that would not change at all. It would still be the same measurement, the same exact technique as well. So this again is the hopscotch bracelet using the crisscross beads and the round duo beads and 11-0 beads and and a couple eights and my magic cup button. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get lots of different updates on the videos that we create when we post new ones. You can also check out our Facebook page and you can visit our website, potomacbeads.com. You can check out the locations page there, visit one of our stores if you're in the area or if you're near one of them, take a class and gather your materials there. If you can't get to one of our stores, you can always shop online. In the show more option in the details right below the video, there'll be links to all of these beads as well so that way you can get right to them in case you do wanna purchase online from us. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and have fun using all these funky new fun shapes coming out of the Czech Republic. Thank you.